Another doctor is telling parents in these videos what signs in young children are indicative of that child being transgender. A child will often know that they are transgender from the moment that they have any ability to express themselves, and parents will often tell us this. We have parents who tell us that their kids, they knew from the minute they were born practically, and actions like refusing to get a haircut or standing to urinate, trying to stand to urinate, refusing to stand to urinate, trying on siblings' clothing, uh, playing with the quote opposite gender toys, things like that. There is more and more a group of adolescents that we are seeing that really are coming to the realization that they might be trans or gender diverse a little bit later on in their life. So what we're seeing from them is that they always sort of knew something was maybe off and didn't have the understanding to know that they might be trans or have a different gender identity than the one they had been assigned. So that is a, a growing population that, they are, that we are seeing and that's being recognized as being trans and able to be treated. Can you imagine if every child who resisted a haircut or every child who played with the opposite gender toys was considered transgender? Literally every single toddler. This is all toddlers. So are they saying that all toddlers are trans? Well, that's actually, I'm not saying that in a pithy manner. That's actually the point, right? They want every single toddler to be gender neutral because that's the only way that they can destroy objective reality, that they can destroy gender, is if every single person is a part of this. Every single, not, not just adult, not just adult embracing an ideology, not just adolescent being indoctrinated in it, but every toddler being raised and reared as if gender is a social construct, as if there is no such thing as gender, as if their body and their DNA mean nothing, as if they can simply choose whether they're a boy or a girl. This is literally the point. She gives it away here. Then these doctors talk about what follows, what they do in response to these toddlers and young people and adolescents suffering from gender dysphoria, or not, maybe they're just toddlers who said, hey, I'm a boy. Oh, you're a girl, or I don't want a haircut. Every little boy in the country has resisted a haircut. This is what the doctors do in response to this. Gender-affirming hysterectomy is very similar to most hysterectomies that occur. A hysterectomy itself is the removal of the uterus, the cervix, which is the opening of the uterus, and the fallopian tubes, which are attached to the sides of the uterus. Some gender-affirming hysterectomies will also include the removal of the ovaries, but that's technically a separate procedure called a bilateral oophorectomy. And not every gender-affirming hysterectomy includes that, and people who are getting gender-affirming hysterectomies do not have to have their ovaries removed. This is literal child abuse. These doctors belong in prison. This is intentional mutilation of a perfectly healthy body. This violates every tenant of medicine that every doctor in the history of the world has ever promised, taken a vow, adhered to, except doctors who have experimented on people for their own evil intentions. This is like unspeakable. But it's very interesting that you hear her say that they take out your uterus, which by the way, has other terrible, I don't even want to say side effects because it's repercussions. Your chances of cancer, your chances of Alzheimer's increase drastically after a hysterectomy. But you notice how they say, well, it's not the ovaries that are always removed. The distinction that she makes there is not accidental. It's very intentional because the fertility industry which is also largely unethical, wants you to freeze your eggs, to pay tens of thousands of dollars to do this, and then to pay additional tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars for surrogacy. So they profit off of destroying your fertility, but they leave the ovaries in there so that they can profit again off of your desire to have children because it's an innate desire in all of us. That's what they do to girls. This is what they do to boys. A phalloplasty is a procedure to uh, basically create uh, uh, a penis or a phallus for uh, an individual who was born biological female, 
and who seeks transition to uh, a male uh, gender. The procedure is done with plastic surgeons and urologists. The urologists manipulate the tissues in the surrounding area to lengthen the urethra. A new scrotum is created and uh, some of the anatomical parts of uh, the female anatomy are removed. The plastic surgeons are in charge of creating a new tissue that will ultimately meet the lengthened urethra and the additional tissue that's been moved to uh, create uh, the uh, neophallus. We typically utilize tissue from elsewhere. For example, the forearm or the thigh is used. The plastic surgeons are also responsible for uh, providing sensation by doing the nerve coaptation so that the new phallus will have sensation and also responsible for reestablishing the blood supply and also to shape it in a way that appears more um, physiologically and anatomically um, like a natural one. These doctors should be institutionalized. They're mutilating people who suffer from mental health issues and they're the ones who should be institutionalized for severe mental health issues. They're playing God.